Hello guys, this is me, Madhuresh, your electrical guruji, and today we are going to discuss about the top five misconceptions regarding current. As voltage and current, these two parameters cannot be seen with the eyes. These two parameter makes many blunders. So today we are going to discuss about some of them with respect to current. So without any delay, let's start with today's topic that is misconceptions regarding current. Misconception number one, flow of electron is called as current. In some of the textbook or in educational website, current is considered as flow of electrons and that produces biggest blunder of all time. And that's because actual definition of current is little bit confusing to understand. According to the definition of current is the rate of change of charge or flow of charge with time. So current is not related just to electron but to charge. To understand current, we first need to understand the charge Q. See, all the matter in this world are made up of an atom. What's an atom? Suppose we zoom into this cat at atomic level so that we may see the atom. Atom is made up of three subatomic particles neutron, proton, and electron. Neutron and proton has one atomic mass unit weight, while electron is relatively lighter in weight that is just 0.00054 atomic mass unit. Neutron are chargeless particles while proton are positively charged and electrons are equally negatively charged particles. As neutrons don't possess charge, let's keep them aside from discussion. Current is flow of charges. Electron and proton both are charged particles, but as electrons have no mass, weakly bounded and far from its nucleus, it's really easy to add or remove electrons. Hence, in most of the time, electron flow produces current, whereas proton are close to the nucleus and hence tightly bounded to it, and it is very difficult to remove or add any proton in an atom. So mostly proton don't move and hence don't take part in current conduction. But in some phenomena like fuel cell or some special batteries or in proton conductor, proton also moves and produces current as these are also charged particles. Apart from proton and electron, one more charged particle present in the nature called as ion. To understand ion, let's get back to atom. In normal condition, number of proton and number of electron in an atom are equal and hence they both balance the total charge of atom and keep atom in neutral state as both charges cancel out each other. But if the number of electrons are less than proton, then atom becomes positively charged. Or if the proton are less than electron, then the atom becomes negatively charged. So these charged atoms are ion. Actually yes, but ion has even much wider definition. Ions can be single charge atom of hydrogen or multiple charge atom of the same element like two atoms of oxygen or multiple charge atom of different element like sulfur and oxygen forms SO2. The best example of ion production is electrolysis. In the process of electrolysis, flow of ion produces current. As 70% of our body is made up of fluid which contains electrolytic elements, when we get the shock, the current produces due to flow of ions. 
hence the current flow in metal is made due to electron but the more appropriately the current is a flow of charges with time and charge particles are proton electron and ions so here we have burst our first misconception misconception number 2 during a current electrons in wire start jumping from atom to atom we usually think electrons jumps from atom to atom just like this but the actual scenario is little bit different in order to understand let's zoom in to this metal conductor to an atomic level metal has very unique structure where electrons are loosely bounded to its nucleus especially the ones which are in valence shell these are called as electron c in electron c these electrons are moving at a random direction then you may think why the current is not produced it is because the electrons move in such a direction that they cancel each other's effect so the net current becomes zero but if the conductor placed in an electric field all electrons start to flow towards positive potential and then current get produced that's why during a current electrons don't jump from atom to atom instead during current electrons are drifting and floating in a particular direction and this leads to the third misconception that is electrons actually moves at the speed of light practically the electron sea is pretty crowded electrons are situated almost everywhere and normally they are moving in a random direction such as they cancel each other's motion so the total current produced remains zero but when they are placed in an electric field they start to slowly drifting towards positive potential as they are very crowded the speed is very very low for an example it's just like walking in a crowd you cannot run at your usual speed you are just going to push the person in front of you and moves same happens with electrons they are moving towards positive potential but it's at very slow speed because they are not moving they are drifting and pushing the neighboring electrons the speed of electrons in a dc can also be calculated with this formula in this the n is the free electron density of metal e is the electron charge and a is the cross sectional area of conductor let's take an example to clear the concept see for copper the electron density is 8.5 into 10 raised to 28 electrons per meter cube and suppose if a 10 ampere current is flowing through a conductor of a diameter 10 mm if we put all these values in the formula we get the drifting velocity equal to 3.36 cm per hour that is very slow very very slow hence electrons don't move at the speed of light but contradictory they are drifting at a very very slow speed even few centimeters per hour though electrons drift very very slowly but electricity moves at nearly the speed of light and we make blunders with current and electricity which leads us to the next misconception misconception number 4 flow of current is flow of electricity actually current is flow of charges and not the flow of electricity here electricity is referred as electrical energy or electrical power current can flow in both the direction but energy will flow in only one direction electrical power is the amount of energy transferred in per unit time when electrons start drifting in resonance with each other due to electromotive force current get produced 
and the power is energy transferred in unit time. Hence, though current helps to produce electricity, it's the product of current and voltage. To understand this clearly, let's see the analogy of sound energy. Suppose air molecules are charges, then the motion of air molecule is considered as wind which is equivalent to the motion of charges that is current and the sound propagating through air will be equivalent to the electricity or electrical energy. It can be expressed with the help of sound propagation in the air. Sound propagate in the air with the help of air molecules but the speed of air molecules or the speed of wind is much slower than the speed of sound. Sound can propagate at a very fast speed in the air than the wind or air molecule. It is just like that. Electricity moves at very high speed than the electrons or current. That's why we have burst our fourth misconception that is electricity and current flow are one and the same. No, actually electricity moves at the speed of light and flow of current and flow of electricity are two different things. Let's move to our final misconception that is current causes electric shock. Actually current don't causes electric shock. It's the voltage that causes the shock but it's the current that causes the damage. Human body has a resistance of 100,000 ohms. That's really huge. So in order to force the current to flow through our body, we require large amount of voltage. But large amount of voltage don't harm our body. It's the large current that can cause us the severe damage. If current beyond 10 milliampere flows through our body, we start to feel the pain and if the current increases 100 milliampere, it's lethal. Let's see these two contradictory examples. One is the car battery which has 45 ampere hour which don't cause us the shock because it has only 12 volts voltage and this 12 volt voltage is not sufficient to force that current to flow through our body which has 100,000 ohms resistance. On the other side, Van de Graaff produces voltage of around 12 mega volt and still we don't get any severe shock because it produces only few milliampere of current. Hence, when voltage is above 42 volt DC or 110 volt AC and current is above 10 milliamp we get the shock and if current goes beyond 100 milliampere it's lethal. So those were the top 5 misconceptions regarding current. Hope you have liked the video. If you find it useful please do share with your friend and do subscribe the channel for such content. Stay tuned, stay safe. Thank you.